again to all the guests, all the speakers who accepted to come to Siena for this uh, forum. And uh, I hope uh, all the audience will enjoy what we are discussing today, because this is really a, a new vision uh, to being uh, uh, in our field of reproductive medicine to play a role uh, on a wide uh, view. Uh, in fact, with what, we, what I started to do with Wiley in 86, uh, uh, when I was uh, in, in his group in La Jolla, uh, was we developed at the beginning the neuroendocrinology of pregnancy. It was a new field. John Charles, at that time, we were discussing about endocrinology of placenta, and we defined, oh, there is a neuroendocrinology of placenta. What we, uh, I dedicated in the last 15 years, in this new millennium, also suggesting, discussing with Wiley, was to do the neuroendocrinology of uterus. No? We moved from the placenta to the uterus. And also uh, playing the same actors in the two organs, because uh, uh, women's health is driven by the same gene. So if you have a, a modified gene during your fertile life, you probably bring with you during gestational life. So uh, the endometriosis is a, a very common disease in our discipline, in our practical uh, daily gynecology practice. Is a, a benign disease, and for those of you, of you who doesn't know this disease, the endometrium grows outside the uterus, and there are three possibilities. One is the retrograde menstruation throughout the fallopian tubes. You see the, uh, these cells become ectopic. Another possible migration is by vascular and lymphatic dissemination. You see the, the endometrial cells which goes into the peritoneum and become ectopic. And the third possibility, which is very new, is the stem cell. The endometrium is rich of stem cells. This stem cell migrate into the peritoneum, proliferate, and become ectopic. So independently from the mechanism of dissemination, these cells are localized in many organs, particularly ovary, peritoneum. These are very typical. Bladder, bowel. Uh, other localization described are the lung, the umbilicus, the abdominal muscle, the, even the brain. So these cells move all around the body. Uh, what is the reason why women come to the gynecologist? For two reasons. Women suffer of heavy pain, menstrual pain, or women suffer of infertility. That's why it's a huge topic in, in reproductive medicine, because when patients come to an infertility clinic, the first question we say, oh, have you a painful menstruation? Are you infertile? We immediately start to correlate and think to this uh, disease. Uh, thinking to one, 10 percent of women affected, there are 150, 200 million of women in the world. It's a huge number. Many people say, no, it's impossible. But the question is, uh, the reality is, I was graduated in Siena in 80, 1980, 35 years ago, and we had much less patients with endometriosis. Once a, a month, twice a month. Now we have once a day, but one of the major reasons is the first pregnancy is postponed all over the world, improved diagnosis, we have new machines, and thirdly, which is very interesting, environmental contaminants, epigenetic events, are inducing estrogen and progesterone modifications. Uh, this is the pathogenesis, very complicated, is starting from endocrinology, classic endocrinology, moving to inflammation, involving apoptosis, autophagia, proliferation, invasion, neuroangiogenesis, driving to pain. This is a, a nice review by Bart O'Malley, another good friend of Wiley, uh, and he, he is working on this uh, epigenetic variation of uh, estrogen receptor activity throughout the DNA material transferases, stereogenetic. There is an increased activity of estrogen receptors, hypomethylation and inflammation, and local estrogen production by aromatase expression. So women with endometriosis do not have high levels of estrogen, but they have more estrogen receptors, more local estrogen production. So it's a very special endocrine disturbance with some genetic variation, of course, as mentioned by Bill Crowley. And secondly, uh, progesterone. Progesterone receptors are induced by uh, estrogen. They modulate proliferation, inflammation, and apoptosis. There is an, a progesterone resistance which induces uh, and hyperproliferation, hyperinflammation reduced apoptosis throughout these uh, co-modulators, co-repressors, co-activators shown in the first presentation by 
Mark Momini. Uh, at the end of the endocrine disturbance, inflammatory cells increase, macrophages, B cells, natural killer, neutrophils. You see, the same cells introduced for the uh, insulin resistance by Mark, now we find in the uterus, activated by a mechanism which can be estrogen related, the progesterone dependent, resistant. These cells produce a lot of uh, pro inflammatory cytokines. This is a decreased anti inflammatory chemokines, with uh, some of those. Uh, who are present into the body, and more prostaglandins. So the mechanism of pain in these women are more pro-inflammatory cytokines, more prostaglandins, increased expression of new nerve fibers in the endometriotics. This is an NGF localization uh, in two forms of endometriosis, upregulation of neuropeptides, and treatment of nerves. So these women have a lot of pain in the, during the menstrual cycle, but also independently from the menstrual cycle because they become chronic, headache, and they have, there is a central sensitization, psychological involvement, and HPA axis activity. This is why uh, we started with, at the time, 15 years ago, to discuss with Wiley what's the role of HPA axis in this situation. And uh, f of course, uh, CRH and related molecules are those uh, which uh, Wiley discovered in 1981, so we decided to, to, to work. This is the classic slide in which CRH in the hypothalamus stimulates pituitary ACTH and adrenal cortisol. And you modify mood and food intake, immune function, metabolism, neurovegetative responses. But what about reproduction? This uh, CRH is in the neuroendocrinology part, is in the adrenal gland, in the gastrointestinal tract, cardiovascular, connective tissue, but also in a reproductive tract. This is was why we studied. And we focus on the endometrial cells. You see here, these are the uh, CRH and related peptides, urocortins, which were discovered in PBL at Salk uh, later in the 90s. So thro throughout this molecule, neuropeptides, they are expressed in the endometrium, and they can modulate hormonal regulation, stress, inflammation within acting throughout the CRH, R1, and R2 within the endometrium. So we transported these uh, molecules from the brain to the uterus, to the endometrium. And uh, together with prolactins, relaxing substance P, you see here, there is a paracrine regulation and autocrine regulation. This was the beginning of the story. Uh, of course, we, we try to, the menstrual cycle is the most important function of endometrium. And if you see, there is a good correlation. Throughout the first phase of the cycles, no changes. In the second phase of the cycle, secretory phase, huge increase of CRH and urocortin expression. Uh, when we studied uh, these uh, patients with endometriosis, you see here, no changes at all. So part of the endocrine uh, derangement related to estrogen and progesterone is also related to local neuropeptides expression, which do not change throughout the cycles, because probably the progesterone resistance did not induce any change in CRH and urocortin. But what about the, 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 the lesions? We were able to detect urocortin in the uh, cyst in the ovarian endometrioma. This is a typical cyst of endometriosis. We found a huge increase of uh, mRNA of urocortin, while in the deep lesion, those who are very painful, those who are very uh, impact uh, on, uh, on infertility, huge increase of CRH, urocortin, and CRH type 2 receptors. With Patricia, uh, we did this experiment very recently in our lab, and we discovered also at the same time with Paola Piomboni and Luce Ludi that there are nerve growth factors and synaptophysin in those tissues, you see here, and TNF alpha, which is a very potent in inflammatory actor, induces an, an increased secretion of uh, synaptophysin and nerve growth factors into the uh, inflammatory cells as well as into the uh, endometriotic cells. So uh, our point now of reference regarding local effect of uh, CRH is that can work on inflammation, and we have uh, now some experiments showing on COX-2 and other uh, prostaglandin uh, uh, synthesizing enzyme inducing pain. On the other hand, is inducing neuroangiogenesis or nerve growth factors and synaptophysin. So this is the local situation. And uh, the inflammation, the mechanism, 
can be active. You see here, CRH urocortin can be localized together with the other cytokines, nitric oxide, uh, stress factors, uh, growth factors, and other factors within a possible uh, inflammatory endocrine pathway within endometriosis. But what about the stress mechanism and central mechanism? Because pain absolutely activates the, uh, the, the painful situation and stress. So which comes first? Stress induces endometriosis and endometriosis induces stress? This is, can be dual because, you know, uh, some of women, as shown now by Bill Crowley, can have a predisposition to that, so some of those environmental genes, they can have a more gene, uh, endometriosis, so pain and stress be induced by pain. But you know that depression, uh, somatoforms, disorders, psoriasis, gastritis, anxiety, chronic fatigue, are all disorders correlated with endometriosis. So which comes first? These disorders induce stress and then endometriosis, or endometriosis induce stress and then these other comorbidities. This is the clinical situation. When we see a patient today with endometriosis from many years, if you ask carefully to those patients, have you anxiety or have you gastrointestinal disorders, have you psoriasis, you, you find. And the question is, which came first? And how do they are correlated? This is to be explained. Uh, these women have a, uh, you see here, a, a reduction of quality of life because 79% have a household course, work activity reduced by 66%, sport activity 56%, sleeping disorders, sexual relationships 71% disorder. So it's really heavy for women to suffer endometriosis. And because of a chronic pain, uh, these are depression, for example, you see here, 86% of patients with endometriosis have increased stress and depressive disorders. Of course, mild and moderate, 22 and 31, but severe is 32%. So they feel openness, isolated, worthlessness, depression, and there is no correlation with psychiatric syndrome and endometriosis stage. So women with pain are suffering. And this is a very, Silvia Vanuccini is studying with other, our psychiatrist, Professor Andrea Fagiolini, and if you see here, uh, in women, our patient with endometriosis, 36% had somatoform disorder. So it's a huge amount of patients. One out of three patients has some psychiatric disturbances. What about uh, the perceived stress? With Rossella Napi, who is one of our best experts in stress in Italy, uh, she, she gave us to, she said this to Lucia Lazzari, to perform a perceived stress scale we published on fertility, sterility, a good journal whose editor-in-chief is here, Antonio Pellicer, and we, yeah, we <laughs> described that women with endometriosis have high levels of perceived stress before surgery. You see here, women with severe endometriosis, severe pain, more stress. Endometrioma, less pain, less stress. If we move uh, before and after surgery, you see here, again, the stress which was before surgery, after stress, improved the perceived stress. So the disease, the stress, is probably secondary to the disease in this situation. And if you do many surgical procedures, however, this is something which is described in many cases now. Women with endometriosis receive one surgery, two surgery, three surgery. This is very stressful. No question, but these women suffer, and there is a more surgical, more repetitive surgery you do, more perceived stress you have, and more comorbidities you have, more psoriasis, more gastroenteritis. These women come and say, my doctor say, go to the psychiatrist, not go to the gynecologist anymore. But this is a combination, a real combination of two disorders. So uh, what is the causal and what is the effect? If there is a causal stress on endometriosis and pain, and then we have stress, but these comorbidities represent really a situation in which stress is, is inducing and stress is uh, absolutely related. To finish my presentation, uh, endometriosis is a very gynecological disease related to estrogen progesterone, related to inflammation. However, uh, we may have a, a peripheral CRH urocortin activation for an acute inflammatory event and pain and then infertility. When the, the disease becoming chronic, chronic inflammation, the central CRH, with, again with the central pain, uh, cause these neuroaffective symptoms and uh, cause a very 
enlarging the disease from a local painful situation to a general chronic inflammatory disease. So when Neil Stroop did, uh, Billy Stroop will show next time the chronic disorder, chronic inflammatory disorders, some reproductive disorders like uh, uh, fibroids and endometriosis can be included as uh, chronic inflammatory disorders affecting infertility. Just to finish my presentation, I want to acknowledge all the group of colleagues in Siena, uh, the, 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 the residents and the lab, the PhD student, Patrizia Cararelli in particular, Martina Gori, Alice Ludi, Paolo Arcuri and, Ar and Paola Piomboni who are directing the activity in the lab. And I thank all of you for enjoying Siena and this meeting. Thank you for the attention.